Good morning and welcome to Westminster Presbyterian Church in Warner Robins as we join in virtual worship. As we begin, I ask you to ponder these words. Always pray to have eyes that see the best in people, a heart that forgives the worst, a mind that forgets the bad, and a soul that never loses hope in God. If you believe and I believe, and we together pray, the Holy Spirit must come down and set God's people free, and set God's people free, and set God's people free. The Holy Spirit must come down and set God's people free. Invisible God, give us hearts to see the things that our eyes overlook. Open our hearts to feel the things that our hands can't touch. Open our ears to hear the still small voice, which sounds like only silence to our listening ears. Teach us to know you for what you really are, not flash or thunder, but love spoken softly flowing like a fountain, bathing the soul and the skin. In that spirit, let us worship God. And as we begin our worship, let's pray together. Lord, your words are sweet to the taste, sweeter than honey. Let them be our daily meditation and our study. <clears throat> Give us ears to hear, for we marvel at your instruction. Train us in righteousness, grant us patience and persistence, and equip us for every good work. Inspire our faith and give us voices to proclaim your message. Guide our feet and keep them from every false way, for you alone speak the words of life. Amen. And here our scripture this morning from Exodus 17, 1 through 7. The whole Israelite community set out from the desert of Zin, traveling from place to place as the Lord commanded. They camped out at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. So they quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses replied, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you put your Lord to the test? But the people were thirsty for water there, and they grumbled against Moses. They said, Why did you bring us up out of Egypt to make us and our children livestock, and livestock die of thirst? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, What am I going to do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord answered, Go out in front of the people. Take with you some of the elders of Israel, and take in your hand the staff, with which you struck the Nile and go. I will stand there before you by the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it for the people to drink. So Moses did this in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called the place Massah and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and because they tested God saying, is the Lord among us or not? Here ends the reading of God's holy word. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our Lord endures forever and ever. You know, sometimes sermons take U-turns, and this sermon certainly has. We started out, or I started out, in the planning and in my study, thinking that we were going to go with the next topic, the next logical topic, of how we receive criticism. But the sermon has morphed into something different. And I have learned over my years in the pastorate that when things morph, it's usually because of the guidance of God. That there's some word that the people need to hear that I wasn't thinking about. And so we come 
to the tale of Moses trying to lead the children of Israel from the desert into the promised land. Now it wasn't long before the waters had separated and the last Israelite foot has stepped onto dry ground when the people started complaining. Moses, we're thirsty, we're thirsty, there's no water, there's no water. It's dry in the desert of shore and there is no water fit to drink. It's bitter. It's undrinkable. If we drink it, we'll die, Moses. There was that intensity behind the people's complaints to Moses. So what did Moses do? Moses went to God. And Moses asked God, what should I do? What can we do, God? How can you fix this? And God did. He gave them water. And then a second time, not very long after this, the people complained some more. Moses, we are dying because we are hungry. We would have been better off to be slaves back in Egypt working for Pharaoh. Did you just bring us out into this desert to die? And once again, Moses took the criticism of the people to God. And God heard and God responded. And out of God's providence, there was manna and there was quail bread and meat, enough for everyone. Another dramatic demonstration of God's presence and God's power and God's protection. But memory was short in the desert and trust was a frail thing. Once again, a mob grew together, almost a mutinous mob. Groups of people who were just plain angry and scared and uncomfortable. Moses, there is no water. Did you just bring us here to die? Moses again went to God, but the interesting thing is God didn't, Moses didn't bring the people's complaint to God. Moses went to God for himself and said to God, what am I supposed to do with this group of people? What am I supposed to do? Do you hear the fatigue and the frustration and the fear and the worry in that question, what am I supposed to do? And God set a series of commands to Moses. He said, get the staff with which you made the Nile turn red. And take that staff and stand before the rock of Horeb and I will be before you and I will be in your presence. And when it was time, Moses took that staff, that visible, visible symbol of God's power flowing through Moses. And he struck the rock and out came water. He struck the rock and out came water. The power of God was still present in the desert. God was still working through Moses as the leader of the children of Israel, imperfect as he was. But I want you to remember that phrase that God went before. 
God is the true leader. God is the one in whose steps Moses was to follow. And here's where the sermon takes the most dramatic U-turn. It's not really a story about Moses. It's a story about the mob and how that mob failed to listen, failed to remember, failed to trust in all of the times that God had operated through Moses, of all of the times that God had left them, led them out of captivity, of God's power in all of those plagues, of God's power and providence in the sending of water and manna and quail. Now I get it because I have had my share of frustration and fear, anxiety over how to lead, worrying about what the future would hold and how we would deal with it, wondering if I could be leader enough. I get that that's where many of us are, leading, are living. We're living in times when the knowns are far fewer than the unknowns, when our passion for things can't be lived out, when everything is losing a new, is learning a new way, it's as if we were taken from Israel and dropped, taken from Egypt and dropped in the desert. When we're not sure who to trust and where by day by day by day these things build up, often into words that we wished we hadn't spoken, that end up in uncivil conversation that are all about us and our individual fears instead of community. I get it. I get it. We are a people. And especially those of us who feel that we have been called by God to live in a certain way that brings about a new reality and we feel stifled at every turn. Now, if that is what you're living, you're not far from the mob yelling at Moses. But we don't have to stay there because we can remember and we can trust because God is ahead of us because God, God pours providence over our heads, because God knows and God cares, and God is working through all things. It's a good time to remember the song that was sung when Joshua took his people, Moses, has gone, he's been left behind, his job is done, and that mantle has been passed to, Mos to jo Joshua. And he takes the people into the, promised la into the promised land, which turns out to be almost as scary as living in the desert. This land of milk and honey was not necessarily easy, but this is what Joshua sang. I will be with you wherever you go. Remember, remember. I will be with you wherever you go. Remember, remember, remember.
in the midst of the whining and complaining and critiquing and unwise words and self-centered actions and fear and frustration. Remember that song, for it came out of the children of Israel complaining in the desert and a leader who would not quit and a God that was forever before him. To God be the glory. Amen. It has been a long time since we have said the Apostles' Creed, and I avoided it a bit because <clears throat> it's hard to speak that many words with a mask on, but then I remembered that a lot of you watching, like me, are not wearing a mask right now. So if you want to stand, which is the tradition in saying the Apostles' Creed, or if you want to remain sitting, it doesn't matter. God is honored by our words as well as our posture. Let us speak what it is that we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray together. Eternal God, we thank you for each new day you grant us. Help us to always remember that it is you who has given us life. It is you who deserves our thanksgiving. Help us in these moments when we take life for granted or when we have a tendency to grumble and complain. Remind us then of whose we are. We ask not to be reminded harshly, but please, Lord, get our attention. Remind us to pause and give thanks. Remind us to thank you for all your blessings and mercies to us. To thank you for who those we love. To thank you for the Christian community, our brothers and sisters close by and far away to thank you for the glorious and extravagant creation that surrounds us. Help us to take time to see and be renewed and to give thanks. To thank you for those caring for the sick, those researching a vaccine in this time of COVID-19. To thank you for all who have come to us with understanding and forgiveness and encouragement and wisdom. Be with us on our journey as we give serious attention to the words and teachings of Jesus. When fear would paralyze us, give us the ability to somehow trust you, to know that we are of more value to you than the sparrows. When loyalties would divide us, give us the ability to, like Jesus, <coughs> our teacher and master, help us to follow when it is easy and when it is not. Give us the ability to put aside our selfish desires and to commit ourselves and lose ourselves for the sake of the mission of Jesus Christ to heal this broken world. When we are overwhelmed by the pain and the stress of our journey, it is hard to be thankful. Be a strong presence to us and for us all. Strengthen us when we are weak and exhausted. Bring these gifts to your children throughout the world, for we know you love us all. We ask this in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now hear this charge from God's word as it's found in Philippians 2, 1 through 4 and 12 through 13. Therefore, remember the word therefore is a stop sign that wants you to really pay attention. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any sharing in this spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself. And looking to your own interests, and not in looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work for out your salvation with fear and trembling for it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to forget fulfill God's promise and now may the Lord bless you and keep you make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.